The United States built a weapon so powerful, it doesn't need explosives, just raw speed and solid steel. The Navy's rail gun, costing over $200 million, fires metal projectiles at more than 8,000 feet per second, slicing through enemy ships like paper from nearly 100 miles away. But after years of jaw-dropping demonstrations, the weapon suddenly disappeared. Why did the Navy shut down one of its most advanced systems? And what hidden problem forced them to abandon it? The story begins at the Naval Surface Warfare Center, where this massive weapon stood on its testing platform, silent but deadly. Its twin rails gleamed under bright lights, a product of 15 years of engineering and half a billion dollars in development. Unlike traditional cannons, this one used no gunpowder or explosives. Instead, it relied on science electromagnetic energy that hurled a seven-pound projectile down the barrel faster than most missiles. When fired, the projectile exited at 8,270 feet per second, more than five times faster than a rifle bullet. What makes it terrifying is that it carries no warhead. Its power comes from kinetic energy alone. At hypersonic speeds, a solid metal slug becomes just as destructive as a small explosive shell. Early tests used an eight-megajoule system. But the Navy had even bigger plans, a 64-megajoule version designed for frontline warships. However, the power demands were enormous. One shot needed as much electricity as several city blocks. The rail gun could hit targets 100 miles away, far beyond the range of standard naval guns. Coastal bases, enemy ships, even aircraft could be struck with deadly accuracy. Test footage showed the weapon's raw force, a quiet hum, the charge building, then a blinding flash and thunderous blast as the projectile vanished into the distance. No training ground near civilians could safely contain this weapon. It had the potential to change naval warfare forever. Rail guns eliminated the risks of storing explosive rounds on board ships, but they came with serious drawbacks. Each shot drained huge amounts of energy. The rails wore out quickly. Heat buildup threatened to melt core parts of the gun. Maintenance was constant. By 2021, those challenges outweighed the benefits. The Navy quietly pulled funding from the program and shifted focus to hypersonic missiles and laser weapons. The rail gun, once seen as the future of naval firepower, became a costly lesson in the gap between ambition and reality. But as one weapon faded, another emerged. On May 16, 2020, the USS Portland made history. Its crew prepared to test a different kind of weapon. One ripped from the pages of science fiction. High above, a small drone buzzed through the air, unaware it was about to be targeted by the world's first operational laser weapon at sea. The laser weapon system demonstrator, mounted on the ship's deck, looked like a sleek telescope. Inside, solid-state laser diodes generated a beam of invisible light energy. Unlike the brute force of a rail gun, this weapon was silent, precise, and lightning fast. No ammo, no explosions, just pure energy at the speed of light. Radar locked onto the drone. Computers calculated its flight path in milliseconds. The laser turned and tracked the target. Then it fired. There was no explosion. No fireball. The drone simply failed. Its circuits overheated and died, sending it crashing into the sea. The Navy had just proven that laser weapons weren't theory anymore. They were real. This system can engage multiple targets at once, switching instantly between them. Enemy drones, missiles, and small boats now face a defense that reacts faster than any gunner. The laser doesn't just destroy. It disables, blinds, or fries electronics. Small boats used by terrorists or rogue states can be stopped without sinking them, giving commanders new tactical options. And while lasers still require significant power, they're far more manageable than railguns. Most modern warships can support these systems without major upgrades. The era of futuristic naval weapons has arrived, not with a bang, but with a silent beam of light. Managing heat is one of the biggest challenges with laser weapons, but engineers have created cooling systems that keep them running during long battles. The cost benefits are clear. Each laser shot costs about $1 in electricity. Compare that to the millions spent on traditional interceptor missiles. A single laser system can take down hundreds of targets for the price of one missile. These weapons mark a major shift in naval power. Nations without laser tech risk 
having outdated fleets almost overnight. The balance at sea is quickly tipping toward countries with this light-speed defense. Military planners immediately see the impact. In the past, swarms of cheap drones could overwhelm ship defenses, but lasers flip the equation. Expensive attack drones are now vulnerable to low-cost, unlimited energy defenses. While lasers strike with precision, the Navy still depends on heavy firepower to hit long-range targets. But what happens when those massive weapons need to be reloaded in the middle of a battle? Inside the missile bays of Navy destroyers, crews prepare Tomahawk missiles, long-range weapons that can hit targets over 1,000 miles away. These sleek white cylinders carry enough firepower to level entire city blocks. Tomahawks are guided by advanced systems that follow the terrain to avoid detection, flying low and slow under radar. Their long reach changes everything. Targets once considered safe deep inland can now be struck from ships beyond the horizon. Coastal bases, bunkers, and infrastructure are all within range. With seven different variants, commanders can choose between standard warheads or specialized payloads for different missions. Underwater, submarines carry their own deadly arsenal. The Mark 54 torpedo, packed with over 1,000 pounds of powerful Torpex explosive, can rip through enemy subs. It's 50% stronger than TNT. With sonar guidance and a 10,000-yard range, these torpedoes track targets silently through the depths. Surface ships can also launch them, and their smart systems help them avoid friendly vessels. But one of the Navy's most dangerous tasks isn't in battle, it's rearming at sea. In port, cranes lift missiles with precision. At sea, rolling waves make every movement risky. Ships sway, decks tilt, and sailors must guide half-ton missiles into tight launch tubes under constant motion. A single slip can mean disaster. The Navy removed on board cranes years ago. Too many accidents proved the risk wasn't worth it. Now, rising tensions with Russia and China mean ships may need to reload far from any friendly port. Crews train non-stop for these high-stress scenarios. The process often begins under cover of darkness to avoid detection. Sailors wear safety harnesses and use hand signals to coordinate over the roar of waves and wind. Missiles are raised by winches and muscle, carefully guided into place as the ship rocks beneath them. Modern weapons like the Norwegian Naval Strike missile add another layer of difficulty. These missiles can hit both land and sea targets up to 345 miles away, but their sensitive electronics require delicate handling. Even with advanced weapons ready, enemy missiles can still punch through defenses. So what happens when ships themselves become the target? Modern naval combat relies on layered defense. If one layer fails, the ship is in danger. When enemy missiles come in fast, commanders have only minutes to respond. The first layer starts far out. Norwegian naval strike missiles on Allied ships can destroy launch platforms 345 miles away before they fire. These precision-guided weapons track moving ships and hit with devastating force. Each one carries enough explosive to disable or sink most enemy vessels. And with smart targeting, they can tell the difference between different ship types, ensuring they strike the right target. High-value targets like aircraft carriers and command ships are prioritized. When multiple missiles are launched at once, they coordinate their strikes to overwhelm enemy defenses through synchronized attacks. As threats draw closer, the second layer of defense kicks in. Himar's rocket systems originally designed for land-based operations, are now used in ship-to-shore bombardments. These versatile launchers can fire a range of projectiles, from precision-guided rockets to long-range tactical missiles. The M142 high-mobility artillery rocket system is especially effective during enemy amphibious assaults or coastal attacks. Each MRS pod holds six guided rockets or larger missiles, all capable of striking with pinpoint accuracy. Its rapid-fire ability allows ships to hit multiple enemy positions with overwhelming force in minutes. The most critical moments occur when incoming missiles break through these outer layers and close in at supersonic speeds. Shipboard radar systems lock onto threats, and onboard computers calculate trajectories in real time. Every second matters. The final line of defense, the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System, activates. Known as CIWS or CWIZ for the buzzing sound it makes, 
This system combines radar tracking with a six-barrel Gatling gun that fires 4,500 rounds per minute.